Abba Father, we thank you for the privilege of gathering tonight and fitting into your plan. We know you have a plan, and we thank you, Lord, that you're manifesting that right here in the Raleigh area, and we believe for the whole state of North Carolina. We thank you, Lord, that we're privileged to know one another and to serve you as you transform our city. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Jim Anthony and I went to this seminar in Tuscaloosa, Alabama and met Ed Silvoso and Rick Heron. And what they spoke that day changed our lives forever. Our calling was a lot more succinct. Our purpose for life was a lot more defined. Our burden for our cities and the places of our influence were incredibly intense and a lot more focused. And that's what has started all this that we call transformation. We were transformed personally and that has spilled over to the areas that we serve in the marketplace. Over the past 13 years, I've been a student of the subject of transformation. I've sat under the tutoring of Ed Silvoso and I've read the many books that he has written. Much of what Ed has written has come from his experiences in Argentina. And I've visited that country on 22 occasions. The Lord has used those trips to give me the desire to see transformation take place in my own country. And I've carried those experiences back to the United States. A group of pastors and leaders in Elk River, Minnesota listened to what I told them, and they did what I suggested, and the Lord brought transformation to their city. The book, The Elk River Story, was published to describe what was implemented in Elk River, and since that time, thousands of these books have been purchased. Today, there are at least 12 U.S. cities that are working to replicate the Elk River model. One of those cities is Raleigh, North Carolina. Every time I think about Raleigh, North Carolina, it makes me smile. The leaders of that city have welcomed me and the principles of transformation. They have implemented those principles, and the Lord is beginning to bring transformation to their city. Well, I feel like my whole life is on fire. Uh, transformation has uh, brought me to a place of renewal, uh, of empowerment in the Holy Spirit, a deeper walk with the Lord than I ever imagined possible. And uh, the results that I always dreamed would happen. You know, when Jesus talks about uh, greater things will ye do than I did, <laughs> I said, yeah, right. But in actuality, uh, we are seeing God do through yielded people, transformed hearts, minds, spirits, bodies, businesses, communities. We are seeing God do greater things than Jesus did. Uh, marketplace of ministry and, and pulpit pastor started building that relationship between the two of us. And from that we began to see the importance of marketplace ministry and how God had made that, began to make that paradigm shift with the church. And as the church began to come into the realization that every uh, born again believer is a minister with no exceptions. And so that's, that's, and from that point we were seeing God do some amazing things of building those close relationships with us and how we began to be focused on the same thing and that's the kingdom of God and that uh, bearing witness wherever we are, whether we're in the church, whether we are in the marketplace, but we are one in Christ and, and bringing about His kingdom. We just give God the glory and the praises for us coming together weekly and praying and not only just praying, but trusting each other. And not only trusting each other, but loving each other. Loving each other with a, a godly love, a genuine love. Loving each other with no conditions. Before I got involved with Transformation North Carolina, I saw the pastors as having a completely separate mission than uh, people like me out in the marketplace. Uh, I was invited in by a pastor who's my mentor, uh, Pastor Morgan. And the moment I came in to pray with the group, it was, uh, it was revolutionary for me because what I saw was men bowing down before the Lord on their faces in humility. And that's the first time I'd ever seen that, a whole group of pastors bowing down before the Lord in humility. And, and naturally, uh, that struck my heart, and I had to do the same thing. It's then that I started to realize that uh, we're one. Well, one of the things I've seen as a result of the uh, the prayer gathering is that uh, I find out that uh, 
most of us have more things in common, particularly with our community, uh, than we have differences. Obviously, we have people of different denominations, different organizations. But the exciting thing is that we've seen people come in with one common goal, and that is to see our city transform. And I can tell you that the, the whole mindset of the differences have faded away, and we focus in on what we need to do to transform our cities. Transformation by its nature is a grassroots movement. It embraces all denominations and all races. And as such, there is a cohesiveness of the folks who have the same heart and the same burden for transformation. And it belongs to all people. I have witnessed in terms of pastors coming together across denominational lines and racial lines and age lines is, is simply a miracle. Uh, I mean, we can talk about that, but to actually have that to happen but then there's a network of people who are working together and praying together is, 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 is just simply a miracle. I mean, it's, it takes God to do that because you can strategize that and plan that, but it, it may not occur. Uh, but here it's happening, and I think this is just the beginning, and it's going to be a blessing not only to Wake County but to the entire state, and, and I trust to the entire nation. There, there's a tremendous shift taking place there. You know, there's tremendous emphasis right now, not on ministry within four walls, but out of the four walls. For a lot of pastors, that's, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow because we have spent most of our lives building what I call a box. And in reality, what God is trying to build is vehicles. And so there is a shift on the church side to take us from the mentality of building boxes to building people to become vehicles so that it's not a matter of having a location where people just come to but rather having a depot that people can depart from so that they can be equipped to actually go out and do the work of the ministry which is what God is after. We've gone through periods of time and it's like we were, it's like we were interceding, we were, we were pressing towards heaven but now it's like heaven's inviting us inviting us to pray and there's a laughter coming from heaven and I see it coming forth in such a manner as that we're just joining. The Father is so anxious to be with us, to be with his children and, it, and, and so now it's a joy, it's a joy whereas before it was like we were doing what we needed to do but it was more of a work, now it's like playing. I, I see a shift in my family, I see my husband, who, uh, who's gone on fire, um, is kind of funny because I'm looking at him and saying, who is this guy? 